have a um let's see here i'm here michael chen here paul foley here penny ration here jim bell here paul tully here amy is uh traveling on business and mike uh more i don't see him yet to see here yet uh i know he said he will be on so probably come on a little later but we do have a quorum uh other members uh Stuart here uh kevin uh, from police let's see here andrew i see um leon or or uh john are they on uh, leon's, leon's in trick. i'm okay i'm here i'm uh, a new town oh, pd yeah oh. thank you leon we appreciate you guys accommodating i know this was not an ideal uh, uh day for you guys so thank you very much with your training uh kevin here joe uh tiger um uh, maria uh anyone else uh, and the members from uh, castle booze joe were there any um uh, public comments no no public comments thank you um well, the third thing on the agenda is the presentation from castle booze so uh, i'll turn it over to um to uh, Chuck and uh, Todd and the, the team, and they can uh, introduce us. We did not, uh, they were, they were fine-tuning it to last night, so we, uh, the building committee, you don't have uh, uh, a copy of the presentation right now. We will get it after, uh, after the meeting. Yes, uh, thank you. So uh, just to begin, to introduce myself, I'm Todd Costa. Um, uh, principal at KBA and the principal that is basically in charge of or heads up our public safety division. Uh, with me today, although he disappeared from my list of icons, is Chuck Booz uh, as well. <clears throat> Obviously, he's the Booz of Castle Booz. And uh, Eric Roycey, who is um, our landscape architect. So we'll go through and we'll kind of run, um, run this in kind of a, a informational manner to begin with and then we'll get into the project so just for those who are committee members that may not be familiar with us if i can get this to operate for me this morning um you know castle Blues has been doing uh public safety since 1963 uh with offices in connecticut rhode island and massachusetts um obviously our closest office to, to you folks in new canaan is um, new britain uh, you can just see some examples of our work and uh, located here throughout the, the you know, the tri-state area and even uh -huh. New Hampshire and Vermont. Um, <clears throat> also, you know, we've done over 50 projects just within the last 10 years. Uh, and, and ironically, the chief is actually sitting in one of our most recent projects, the Newtown PD, uh, their conference room down there. Um, In-house, you know, why we... we Specialized in this in-house, you know, we have public safety architecture is a key thing. Uh, interior design, we have interior designers on staff, just elbows away from uh, from our project team leaders, uh, so they're integrally involved from uh, as even as recently as this process that I'm going to describe coming up. But the the programming sessions, we bring a space planner interior designer in with us, uh, as well as landscape, right again, right from the conception and you know elbows distance away. We start talking about how the building and how the flow works for the landscape um, right into the building, safety, security, uh, welcoming feeling all the way through. Um, and then police facility programming. This is an area that I specialize in, um, in, uh, in within this group, basically bringing all of the experience that we have uh, done in the past with this to the table as part of the discussion to help the communities and then the departments that we're working with, you know, uh, sometimes it's evolved, sometimes it's just look at a different perspective because they've adapted the way they operate to their building. We wanna try and help to see if there's a, a, another way that some of other communities that we've worked with are doing things that will, uh, will assist them in becoming a, you know, just looking at it from a different perspective, if you would. So from there, I would like to hand things over to Chuck to kind of 
describe our charge with this portion of the project. So Chuck. Uh, thank you, Todd. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, we're here to present our proposed design for the reconstruction of the existing building and the construction of a new addition located to the rear or east side of the building. Uh, the new uh, addition is shown in the darker blue uh, behind the main building block. Uh, to be clear, we propose to completely remove the portion of the existing building that presently protrudes to the east uh, and leaving the main building block intact. In its place, we will construct a new addition that will house program elements that require first responder specific fire and seismic considerations. The remaining building block will be stripped to bare concrete subfloors and all non-structural walls will be removed and the lower level concrete floors will be completely removed. This approach will leave nothing to the imagination. Any deficiencies found in the existing floors and walls will be restored to a like new condition. Furthermore, all mechanical, electrical, plumbing, and building support systems will also be completely removed. So the building is essentially gutted. Now, all building restoration work that follows will be brand new, uh, designed to purpose and readily available to the contractor. Restoration work on the roof and the north, south, and uh, west facades will be will proceed simultaneously with the construction of the new addition. All below grade portions of the building's existing masonry walls will be excavated to the bottom of the existing footings uh, and repaired as required. These walls will then be prepared to receive an application of below grade membrane waterproofing and associated new perimeter footing drains. Uh, the roof and the attic area will also be repaired as required and fully insulated. Uh, I really want to commend the town's decision to vacate the building during its reconstruction. Uh, this will significantly enhance the project's overall constructability, enhance the project's uh, and also, uh, it, it, <clears throat> we'll it's going to significantly enhance the project's overall constructability. Uh, essentially, the the, uh, the contractors will have room for their construction tra trailers, their material laydown requirements, and sta and a staging space for construction. The construction time, by the way, will also be reduced, and we estimate that from the first spade in the ground to final completion will be about 12 to 14 months. Uh, in, in closing, uh, if the town elects to proceed with this project as proposed, New Canaan will derive a long-term benefits from a building that is essentially new in all respects. Uh, Todd, I guess we're gonna go to Eric for a site. Thank you. Uh, not quite yet. Um, so oh, okay. just, just to describe some of our process, uh, these are, are um, some of the programming elements, if you would. So to, to, to start the process, we, we sat with the department uh, a couple of weeks ago and we did a, a programming analysis uh, that started with collecting some, you know, uh, analytical data, uh, the, you know, hard number data from the department they graciously provided. <clears throat> we came up with a, um, a program, you know, a baseline program, if you would, based on the um the department's organizational chart and this data that was provided and we sat with the department to review that and to refine that into their operations and the the critical elements that they felt as though were needed and these are some of the criteria that were were utilized as part of that discussion um kind of jumped ahead of myself a little bit here but you can kind of see this resulted in a in a a program you know, off to the left, well, areas, spaces, occupancy, 
all with Jason seats and notes. Um, each one of those rooms, part of the discussion was, you know, what's going to happen within those spaces, spaces, if you would, um, and how they should relate to one another. That's kind of the imagery that you see above, whether they're simulation, defensive tactics, meeting spaces, and how those those all those spaces, as well as the daily operations, are going to interact with one another, um, part of their workflow. And that comes down to an initial bubble diagram that we forwarded on to the department for review to make sure that our assumptions and, and our um, interpretation on the discussion was in fact in line with, with what they were, were mentioning. Um, <clears throat> part of that discussion is the site and how and the needs, how the department uses the site and the needs of the department. And from there, I'd like to pass this along to Eric to talk about the existing um, plan. Eric is within his car, so I don't know if he's got the video feed. But yes, he, I do. Okay, so take it away, Eric. Okay, um, so as, as Chuck mentioned, we've been tasked with uh, designing a renovation that will provide a new police department for the foreseeable future. Um, as part of that, our, our task is, is to work with the department to provide all the needs that that they want or all the wants that they they prefer up front um and then to as as the project goes on then the big thing is the next step would be working again with the town and the department to refine this even further so we're starting with the site and one thing with the site is that your existing site is very constrained um there's actually two sites here i think a lot of folks interpret it as one site that includes the police department, the ambulance barn, the cottage out back, and the daycare slash nursing home just to the north to the top of the, the sheet. Um, and I think people perceive it as, as one site because a lot of the parking in the circulation is shared right now. But this is, we did this drawing to just, just demonstrate how some of that parking is broken out right now. Um, and to show that a lot of the parking, there's a lot of overlap, especially in the green and the blue areas shown here, there's a lot of overlap between the police parking and the staff parking and what's happening at the nursing home and the cottage. So to go on to the next slide, we started off with trying to solve that problem to separate the, the usage between the nursing home and the cottage and the police department and ambulance barn proper. And one thing with police departments um, is that, or two things with police departments are number one, you wanna separate the patrol parking from the public parking as much as you can. Um, the other thing is that you always wanna have two egresses in and out in case one gets blocked, you've got another option to get in and out of the site. So here we've kind of got that, you've already got that as far as the visitor parking is out front uh, um, on South Avenue and the patrol parking is out back. And the big thing with this is we're proposing to build a parking deck that's pretty much at the same level as the parking now over the lower parking lot of the um, nursing home and daycare. This does two things. It'll, it'll allow you to get more staff parking on site. It allows better circulation and it will also allow a covered an area for covered parking for things like um, evidence storage, trailers, uh, and um, impound. So this is a, a fairly simple. The, the deck would not, would be very um, innocuous, I'll say, in that it's at the same level as the existing parking now. The only place you'd really see the, the face of this parking garage is to the east side or to the north where we are accessing it from the, the daycare. That lower level would become mostly um, nursing home and daycare parking, but we're also looking at whether the impound goes down there or other functions for the police can go down there and be separated out somehow as it goes forward. Again, a lot of what we're proposing now isn't as good as the paper it's printed on until we get feedback from the department and from the town itself on what they want and what they think is gonna work out here. So that said, we've got the parking, um, We've got about 79 parking spaces shown here uh, for the police department, and we've got additional parking spaces underneath. 
We've got the drop off for the daycare totally separated from the police department, other than that entry off of South Ave. Um, and we have all the entrances and the and the security in the back of the police department for the patrol parking. We also have the, um, the uh, sally port, a double sally port drive through um, at the back of the building. And this also provides the circulation for that program element, the new department. So I'll turn it back over to Todd to start talking about the building. Well, thank, thank you, Eric. Um, just make sure I to top you. Okay. So to talk uh, about the building, as Chuck had mentioned, we want to really hold that in the existing building proper that's on uh, South Ave. Todd, Todd, let me interrupt you a minute, please. I just, just, just please point out that this plan has been rotated from the orientation of the site plan. That correct. Uh, South Avenue is along the bottom, and uh, the, the the north side is on the left. Uh, uh, thank you. Yes. Thank you, Chuck. Um, <clears throat> So the, the, we're trying to hold that existing building proper to the, the front side uh, or South Ave. And the thought process with this as part of our discussion was really that lower level uh, begins the officer's procession or, or uh, starts their day, if you would, trying to increase efficiency. So at this level, we are looking at uh, things like the, the locker rooms and the, um, the armory. Um, as well as the, the wellness and the defensive tactics. Those are, are areas that will basically feed right off the locker room, again, talking about that adjacencies. And then the prisoner processing and detention area directly off of the Sally Port, which is, is on grade access as well. Uh, this does allow us to kind of compartmentalize the building where your detention area is all located in one section of the building and your release goes directly outside without bringing anybody in and back through the building so they can release the building if you would to um, the plan north or to the left side of this building um, and then the rest of the gray areas here are the building services um, mechanicals mechanical areas facility maintenance and storage um, kind of a utility floor on the lower level or access from the grade at the rear of the site the main business level which is the main level remains as it is with the interaction with records and communication being your primary greeters. But you know, see here, we've, we've basically taken the right side of the building and made that a community EOC training room. Um, it's to house about 40, uh, 40 uh, people in a class. The second part of this floor does become the primary patrol operations where you have patrol sergeants, lieutenants, things of that nature. You have the report writing room and you have the, the roll call briefing um, and, and planning room uh, located to uh, the stair that's directly adjacent to the locker room. Uh, also at this level, again, because it's kind of a mixed function, is your evidence storage. Uh, evidence can come in from patrol officers, be put into lockers at this, this section, and then they can get right back out to the street, um, as well as the detectives, which are floor above can come down, do what they need to deal with within the evidence, and then um, either go back up to work or go off to a, a court case from there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, main entry is actually towards the bottom of the building uh, uh, plan, the bottom of the page, remains the main entry, you still have the vestibule and, and the lobby is there as well. Um, also included in this is the, uh, dedicated interview room interview room and licensing room uh, both multi-purpose where they can kind of both operate as a interview room as well uh, and have two ways of access one from the secure for the department side one from the public side um, of things and then we go up to the upper level here which is <coughs> administration uh, strategically we did locate the training simulator up here directly adjacent to the elevator. So we kind of create an upper lobby. The, the reason for that is um, based on what we noticed from the existing plans and being within the building, we feel as though the, uh, if we put that in the lower level, it would be too uh, challenging on the, the equipment head height wise, you know, floor to ceiling. So this gives us a better opportunity up in this location. Um, so again, you have administration off to the right and you have uh, both levels of investigation 
directly uh, they're sharing the space, uh, sharing this flow with the administration. Um, from there, you can start to see you know, the overall South Ave imagery does not change. But as we come around the building, it, it, the new addition really does kind of fall right into what the current architecture is and then marries up quite nicely. You can see the Sally Port located on the lowest level there, the entry point for the um, uh, officers, you know, reporting to shift and starting their shift, figuring cru uh, cruiser parking and personal vehicle parking would be in the back over here. Um, and then as we come around the building, you can see the, the most of the addition is, is hidden behind the existing building. And we maintain the, the um, imagery that's already existing on South Ave. So I know that was kind of a quick. Would, yeah, would you go back uh, in going through those floors? I didn't see dispatch. Would you go back to those plans and show me where dispatch is? Dispatch was. Um, so if you are familiar with the current dispatch, it is actually located where records is. What we did is we took dispatch and we rotated it around the corner. So it's off to the left and right. the forward side of the building. And that allows us to actually stack dispatch with IT so that the um, IT is in the lower level. So that's all the servers and things that would feed that, that dispatch center. So um, you're saying that what you call communications is dispatch? Is dispatch, correct. How many square feet is this new, is this proposal? It's um, about 27 to 28,000 square feet. And what's the, I'm sorry, just remind me what the current building is. I believe on quick math, the current building was uh yeah i think it was 18 or 20 that did it no, did the, the, current build, the current building is about thirty thousand. yeah right right it, it's about more closer to 28 yeah yeah sorry what i did the math it was on on the main building block i didn't do it with the existing excuse me Todd, I have a question. <clears throat> well, you have the community room there and, the, and then the, uh, the floor above it also. Are you taking out the southern uh, stairwell? That is the intent right now is to, to remove that stairwell and, and be able to utilize the floor plan a little bit better. Okay. The, 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 new, the new stair is uh, just off of the patio and patrol area. That's right, new, new construction. But it's, it's not a big deal to take out a stairwell. It's no, sir. No. Okay. It actually, because those stairwells are designed for egress of a school, large quantity of people, it actually it, it allows us to build a much more efficient stair and utilize that, that floor area in a much more economical manner for the building. And Todd, the um, Sally Port, can you enter it from both sides or is it um, one side? It is a drive through Sally Port. Oh, great, thanks. That's right. Thank you. So, could you talk about the locker rooms and what flexibility there would be for the future and how many you're designing for? I'd love to. Uh, and thank you for bringing that up because that's actually. Uh, was part of our discussion with the department. Uh, if you may or may not be familiar with the 3030 initiative, uh, what that is, is um, it, it's- 30% by 2030. Yeah, women you are officers. very familiar, so that's perfect. So you'll notice that we've backed the locker rooms up to each other. And we have come up with, because the lockers themselves are very specific. We ventilate, and we exhaust the locker room through the locker. And the reasons behind that is it actually, it draws the moisture from the uh, Kevlar vest away from the equipment, um, preserving the equipment and extending the life of them. Because of that, it makes it very difficult to modify that going into the future. You can't shift lockers easily and things of that nature. So what we like to do is to 
created the mising wall between the two of simple construction, simple you know, metal stud drywall that can be shifted and relocated without affecting any of the mechanicals and any of the electrical that's within the uh, lockers as well to give the flexibility to the department for shifting those one way or the other. So what that does allow us to do is you kind of pick a number of total lockers for the size of the department and not have to guess, you know, we have an initial um, assessment, if you would, um, just drawing a blank from the top of my head what that number was, but I think it was like 10 or 12 female lockers at this point um, and 40 or so um, male lockers. And I may be totally off on that number. Um, it's just something that will stick in my head, but it allows us to, if we need to gain it to be 45 or 50 female, you can slide that over based on the locker room arrangement very simply. And you move the doors? No, the doors, the intention is the doors stay where they are. So the, I know we're showing double doors at this point. Um, we haven't gotten into the full breakdown. So this is kind of to say the doors could be on the north side or plan up if you would, or they could be on the plan south um, and work through in that manner. So where in the where in that design would the like the bathrooms and showers be on the two sides? We we're still at a very high level um, for that. It, it, we haven't figured those exact details out just yet. That comes to the next um, the next point. But they're the, they're within the spaces there. They are within the spaces. It is yeah. planned to be within those spaces, those blocks. Yes. So the one thing with this is it's a very um, high level uh, look at the big blocks of area. So detention is composed of you know a handful of cells, if you would. Um, I think we had uh, two, two, and one, if I'm not mistaken. So that will be compartmentalized into each of those areas. But what, based on the time that we, that we had and the exercise to initiate this plan, um, we started at a very high level of the, the well, larger grouping of spaces. Todd, we currently have a garage that was added that serves as sort of a storage space, but also a built, uh, Jim, is it a, uh, and Leon, is it a uh, repair facility as well? Well, the one, one bay is used uh, uh, typically by police for some of their, their internal maintenance work. And the other two bays are evidence storage or any storage, uh, whatever is needed. Correct. Yep. So, so that facility is maintenance part of the lower level there. That's exactly what's intended for there. Part, well, part, of, part of what's that's not. That's not the same as the vehicle maintenance. That's different, uh, Kevin. Right, but I'm just, I'm just saying in terms of uh, the facilities maintenance is sort of the, the uh, utilities room with the, a new power plant, a new a new uh, boiler room. No, so that, that's the building services area is the new boiler room and power plant. Where's that? That is located directly on the corner of the existing building. Oh, building service as opposed to facilities maintenance. Gotcha. Yes. Okay. So the facilities, we, we tried to differentiate the two. Um, you know, building services, we know uh, or understand that the um, ambulance is fed, the ambulance garage is, or ambulance barn is fed from this building, I believe. Um, so we wanted to locate that in such a manner that we could continue to do that if that was the choice. Um, but the facilities maintenance was, was kind of put to the back. We can put a uh, overhead door in here to put a vehicle in there like they have currently, basically maintaining and, and enhancing the, the current situation. Actually, we're, we're in the process of separating the ambulance building with a separate HVAC system. So um, the only connectivity still would be the uh, communications. Okay. And the sewer, and the sewer line. Yeah, also uh, the one consideration is the building services are at the opposite end of the building for where all the utilities enter. All the utilities enter and where you have IT, the gas, the uh, electricity, the communications. It, it, it's certainly our intent to, because this is a, a, a like new building, to replace all of the utilities that are currently coming into the building. We have no idea what the condition they're in 
and uh, that that that's uh, we're going to completely demolish the uh, uh, that, that lower level, uh, get rid of the concrete, and, and find out what's going on there, and uh, uh, install new utilities. Can, can you talk a little bit about why you would redo the concrete on the first two floors? Not, not the what? first, not the first two floors. The uh, the upper floors are going to be. Uh, we want we want to know uh, what what the bare concrete uh, uh, sec uh, main and upper floors look like. We want to be to determine what that looks like, so it would be demolished down to that subsurface. But in the basement. Uh, along South Avenue, uh, there's that, that basement pitches to the east, and if the the headroom uh, along the South Avenue wall is very constrained, it's uh, the uh, the total floor to floor height along that area is ten foot six. You know, take a foot away for construction, you got nine foot six, and and, and you still have utilities to put in. So that's going to come down. Uh, and you're going to have a level floor at the lower level, and you'll have a chance to uh, address all of the utilities. So you're going to you're going to actually excavate about how much then? How, well, it, it's no more than uh, two feet at best along South Avenue. The uh, rear wall uh, is at uh, uh, the planned level. That's about twelve foot six uh, floor to floor back there. So it's only two feet. And, and you know a lot of that space there is, is pitched in different directions. Uh, the, the, the space that was once planned for uh, a firing range, uh, uh, the, that floor is uh, quite challenging. That floor is. Well, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. It's it, it, it's it's a real challenge. I mean, you you, you it, it's it's something that has to come out. It, it's not going to serve you for the future. So while we're taking it out, we're we're, we're going to uh, um, level the whole area. Yeah, I think there's a uh, an issue that needs to be addressed, and that uh, if you take out that whole uh, lower area, whether you compromise the existing building, which was assessed to be in pretty good condition, but uh, it sounds like you could be easily inadvertently undermining uh, uh, well, the uh, integrity of that. Actually, uh, uh, underpinning would improve its in, uh, in integrity. Uh, there's no question about that. You know, the footings that were put in. Uh, a hundred years ago, uh, you know, the, the new footings would be, be, be much more secure. Uh, I mean, that's that's a, a really good approach, I think. I think I'd like to see some engineering work on that before I believe that. Chuck, Chuck are you saying, are you, are you trying to improve the, you know, because police departments are supposed to be um, earthquake proof, I guess. And are you trying to improve the stability of the building? Well, what I'm trying to improve is the usability of the building. Uh, I right. mean, you know, it, it, your, your, your floor to floor with an internal ramp, it, um, it, dictates, it dictates circulation. Uh, the headroom is gonna be quite challenging. Uh, it just doesn't work for a building that's, that's gonna hopefully be there for the next hundred years. Uh, it, you have an opportunity to do it right now, do it right. You're trying to increase the building, the floor height. Uh, we, we, well, we'll not only increase the floor, floor to floor height, but level the floor. So there's one, one floor level for the lower floor. I got you. Uh, also, I, I think you need to investigate the comment to me about taking the concrete out of the upper floors. Uh, we're not taking I, it out. We're not taking it out. What, what we're going to do is take the finishes down to the surface of the concrete just to see its condition. And what if, you, you interrupt me. What I was about to say is I know that at least on the third floor, I've seen it opened up, there is no concrete. So you, you're, you, your, your assumption may be incorrect. That's all I'm saying. Thank you. For the so what, what, I'm sorry, can you go back to the lower level again? Sure. Sort of digging down, I think, is, is it, uh, I don't know. It's an interesting concept. Which which of the spaces in that drawing do you think are insufficient um, headroom? All along the uh, uh, east wall, the entire east wall. And so storage doesn't seem like it would be that big a problem to have not have. You're not in and out of there that much. Uh, 
No, but the existing floor uh, would storage doesn't work very well when the rest of the building is uh, at one level and storage is at another. There aren't any steps or anything. Is it just it's just sloping? Well, there's a ramp there. Uh, you, you know, I'm. Uh, I, I mean, I just sorry, I haven't been down there for a while. Well, either either have I, but uh, I remember the ramp and I remember the. Uh, uh, the sloping floors uh, in, in that uh, uh, southwest uh, corner. Uh, there, there really are no sloping floors there. There is one ramp uh, down the middle that goes, because the lower level there where the parking is now, where you're showing the sally board, is at a different elevation than the floor in the uh, existing building. And there is one ramp down, but everything else is either at their level. They, the floors don't slope except for that ramp. Mm -hmm. Well, the ramp goes from one elevation down to another. That's so what I'm the, saying. The elevation along the west side of the building is higher than the elevation uh, along the uh, east side of the existing block. Not, not in the main building. It's true in the lower, in the-, the well, not, well, we're, only talking about, we're only talking about the lower floor. We're not talking about- uh, what, uh, I'm just, The point I'm trying to make is that the area you mark, marked as detention, uh, I think is at a lower elevation than the existing elevation of the floor in the basement. We would bring that up. That that would be constructed to match the the other levels and would grade uh, around that accordingly. Then the whole the whole parking area would have to be raised in grade. Is that what you're saying? Well, uh, yes, but uh, uh, you, you know. You want to make this building work. There are some things you have to do to make it work. Oh, I'm just asking if that was what your plan was. Yes. No, I, th I think that's confusing. I think I think it, it, you're going to lower the level where the, the locker room, the, the lower level, would to be no. equal to, to the to the level, uh, the current level with the rear. So you're not going to raise the rear. You're going to lower the front. I think there's some of each, Kevin. But that's we don't have to worry about that today. There is some of each. You're right, sir. Um, I, you know, we don't have to get focused on it now. I just think it's, I just, uh, if, if, if it goes forward, I'd be interested in more information. That just strikes me as sort of an unknown in this project. And we had classrooms down there and I tore, tore it again because I just didn't remember it being insufficient. It might not be ideal, but I didn't remember it being insufficient. I think the concern comes in and very valid point, and we will absolutely explore that um, much further. I do know that, as Chuck was saying, that storage area, this wellness, that what we're indicating is storage, wellness, and defensive tactics. I don't know if it's all of defensive tactics or not, was the range. And there is some level of, of um, inconsistency. So rather than add a topping and continue to shrink our uh, floor to floor within that area, per se, um, just to kind of bring everything down, start level and clean. The other challenge is, is the amount of air movement that's needed for some of these things at this level when you're going that far up to a rooftop unit, <clears throat> unit, excuse me, or things of that nature. The ductwork tends to get a lot bigger. So that's going to continue to shrink our ceiling height and, and compress our ceiling height down to the floor. So that's kind of the intent behind dropping that floor to whatever level we end up at. Is wellness what you consider fitness? Is that the same thing? Yes. Hey, um, hey, Chuck and Todd, it's Paul Foley. I, this is a great start, okay? But what I'd like to do is get a copy of this where I can actually hold it and see it. Mm -hmm. And then what I'd like to do is then sit down with our guys and see how this sort of ties into the training center that we're trying to... Uh, propose in here as well, which I think would be a separate building as we're going to go forward. Um, if that makes sense. The training center in, in what we can absolutely get this to you. That was the intent was um, yeah. um, Joe had asked for a copy of this to be able to be distributed. So as soon as this is done, I will PDF and send along to Joe for distribution. Um, can I ask the training center, what are you considering live fire or just the defensive tactics? The... Uh, both, both live fire and defensive tactics and being able to bring 
vehicles into the building and to be able to actually train under the conditions that we're putting our police uh, patrolmen into. So, yeah. Hey, Joe, can you address that? I think we're getting off. I, I, it's it's they're one and the same. I, I think if we're not going to do this, you know, they got to come come together. I think. Yeah, so, th so those areas were decided to be moved to a different location but for any sort of live, anything that you're going to bring a, build, uh, a vehicle into would right. not be part of this building. Correct. It would be part of the range building. Yeah. But I bet you're still going forward to look at possible solutions in that regard, whether it's um, in New Canaan, outside of New Canaan, independent of us, or joint with other uh, municipalities. Is that correct? Correct. I just have an overall comment. Uh, great work, Todd, Eric, Chuck. I, I really like this design. I think we need to dig in and kind of conceptualize everything and maybe make some adjustments, but uh, overall it's a great work and uh, I'm, I'm enamored with it at this point. Yeah, I, I also think this is a refreshing view of, of what we could do with the old building. I think this is great. Could you go back to the um, view of the outside of the building from the, from the rear, the central view? There we go. So I guess my question has to do, as a guy who used to do a lot of roofing in the summers, I see a lot of flat roofs. And flat roofs to me just always spell problems. Um, what are your thoughts on that? It looks, you know, with the amount of space we have, we have no alternative other than flat roofs, but can you uh, can you talk to that a little bit for me, please? Sure. Um, I, I guess the, the, the misnomer is that they're flat uh, <laughs> first. They are low slope um, roofs. They are, we use a, um, a PVC roof is kind of our basis of design that we feel most comfortable with. And to, to describe a PC, PVC roof, um, it, it's a pool liner on your, on your roof. And the, the joints aren't glued, they're welded. So they use heat to basically melt the joints. If you have a seam together, any uh, you know pitch pockets or anything of that nature. So they're, it's ultimately like having a pool um, as part of your roof um, system. They're very, they've been around for years. They're, they're very you know, structurally sound systems. Um, and then just becomes a matter of, of making sure that the, A, the contractor conforms to the, the details and B, you know, the details address the flashing and the, um, um, the you know, drifting, if you would. As and how long do they last? Uh, they are, oh, you had to ask that. 30, <laughs> no, I, 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 I used to be the roofing guy. Uh, it, it, it's a 30 year roof. 30 year roof, yeah. Yeah. They, I believe there are areas, and we've always heard this, especially from our, our roofing guy after Chuck, um, that there are examples of them around after for 50 years and still, you know, doing their job, so to speak. Well, you know, I just like to, would, would like to say, you know, we could put pitched roofs on this building, but what you do is you uh, sacrifice fenestration or, uh, you know, the opportunity to get light into the building. So that's a consideration. Uh, but de definitely a, a scheme could come up with, with all pitch roofs with, uh, you know, 50 year shingles. Uh, but you, you might sacrifice a, a little bit of uh, uh, windows. So uh, while we're on this uh, view, can you, sh is the, all, the addition is everything that is sort of jutting out from the main building? Correct. And so that you're so you're proposing an addition that basically has all all those different levels. Correct. Well, uh, yes. I mean, yeah. a lot of different. So it, since we're building it new, um, would would it make to instead of having all those levels? I mean, can you do it more compactly so that you make the the part that comes? Uh, I don't know, facing 
the daycare center, like, you know, three levels, and then just the Sally port is one level. It's just sort of interesting to have all, all the levels. Uh, just seemed more complicated than you, you might need, but there may be the reasons for it. So well, we, we think it's relatively uh, 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 straightforward. You know, I understand your point. And uh, this is a first pass. Uh, there's a lot of lot of ways to uh, you know mass mass the building, uh, but we have to respect uh, the various functions uh, on each floor and, and how they relate to the existing building. Right. Okay. So we could. Uh, that's something. If we went forward, we could take oh, a look at. Oh, absolutely. A absolutely. A a okay. Absolutely. We, we we have to start somewhere. Right. Right. Uh, is this meant to illustrate no rooftop mechanicals? I mean, where do you get your airflow? They're going to be in the attic. We'll make use of that space. Oh. We were kind of thinking that we could, again, to preserve the life of the equipment, put it in out of the weather and, and get it in that kind of upper space there. But again, very, very early on, we, we've just received the narrative. Um, we were in the process of reviewing that before sending it along to, to the estimator and to... Uh, to Joe, um, and we should hopefully have that out later today. Given that this is rather conceptual, can we realistically price this in, in a few in a week or two? what's our timeline now to do this right? I, be, I believe it's a week, um, and there is contingency that is put to it. But I mean, we do estimating on conceptual level documents like this or. The, the estimator that was hired by New Canaan has done this with us countless times. Yeah, I'm just asking Joe and Todd, is, does it, do, do we need more time? Are we trying to? I can ask the estimator. I just sent him over all the documents um, that, that we have. Um, that was the timeline they committed to. Um, I can follow up with them to see if that is reasonable once they receive the, the last of the documents. But Chuck and Todd, you're, comf you're comfortable estimating on a conceptual plan. Yes, but, but you, 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 you have to recognize, uh, you know, the, the numbers that you're going to be looking at uh, in, in a few weeks are not the numbers you looked at a year ago. Uh, the uh, in, inflation has hit the construction industry especially hard, especially during the a supply chain. So, uh, you know, the the, the the numbers are going up. And we do you, see have an est do you have an estimate on how much more the, the increased percentage? Because that's what the, the county council is looking at quite you know, closely. Some, somewhere between uh, 8 and 12 percent. It really varies. Okay. So the last estimate that was presented to the town council, which was based on the other scheme, had a 10 percent escalation in it. Substantial. Okay. If, if if we change the if you end up changing the massing along the the back the new addition how significantly would that change the um, but you end up with approximately the same square footage. It wouldn't. Okay. We, the, the the estimate would be about the same. Absolutely. So right now, you know, we're scheduled for next Thursday morning at eight o'clock, a regularly scheduled meeting to have the estimator uh, PCNM, PMNC, uh, right, um, to present to us. Uh, and then the building committee will need some time to, uh, to figure out which, you know, what, uh, you know, what direction they want to go in before we present that to the, uh, to the town bodies. Uh, you know, there's probably some complications relative to travel plans and such like that. I'll be out of the country myself from the, uh, uh, you know, from the 17th to the 25th. I think Jim Bell is also going to be out. And I'm so a little concerned about having a, a quorum, uh, you know, for that, uh, for that period. And then we, we come hitting up onto uh, Memorial Day weekend. But, um, you know, there's nothing in there that hopefully we can't, uh, can't work around. Uh, so, Joe, you... You, uh, you know, you believe that, uh, you know, the building committee on the 12th will have, um, I mean, it, it can change, but uh, right now you think the building committee on the 12th will have 
uh, presentation from the cost estimator. Uh, it'll be what it is, but from a from a conceptual perspective, I think the building committee and I'm sure the town bodies will want to know. Um, you know, is it uh, you know how how much more expensive is it to you know tear down half the building and, and rebuild it versus um, not doing that? And we should have you know some kind of an estimate on that next week. Is that is that fair? That that is the that is our schedule. That's the information uh, I have Bill, today. Bill, Bill, what I would propose, I, I, I as, I'm along with Joe. I think I think they can, and along with, uh, with Chuck, I think they can get a a a, a comparable or a, a, an estimate which can be used for comparative purposes by next week. So let's have that leave that as, and let's think about a uh, a special meeting, uh, either uh, like the either the twenty. Are you back on the twenty sixth of uh, June? Yep, I'll be right off the plane from the 25th, bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, ready to tackle the town's problems relative to this police building. Well, how about a special meeting? Either Maybe 20... 6 a.m. on the 26th. That will be even better for me. Okay, good. How, how about a special meeting either on the 26th or the 2nd for us to, to, after we've had two weeks to digest all of that, to have a discussion amongst ourselves and then go uh, ahead with a regular meeting on June, uh, I think it's on June 9th. So have a special yeah. meeting either the, either the second or the 26th. Right, that's what I was going to ask the group because that's, um, that's what I think as well, Jim. So uh, and, and both are fine with me. Um, and then uh, well, I wanna hear what the other guys are uh, thinking on the building committee. Yeah, I'm fine, I'm available. On the, what, I'm sorry, what day are we looking at? Either the 26th or the 2nd. I would prefer the 26th. I think two weeks is probably enough for us to, uh, um, you know, get some feedback, uh, talk amongst ourselves, get the, you know, study this thing in a little more detail. Um, so if we did it on the 26th, uh, <laughs> then uh, we, can, uh, we can move forward with the town bodies because I think, we would then we can we can make some decisions at the at the ninth meeting if we need to we can have a discussion at least on the 26th and see where we are and see what additional work we might need and then maybe make a recommendation on the ninth mm -hmm. exactly so that the town bodies can have it uh the sooner the town bodies get it the sooner they can make the decision so architects can get going and hopefully uh, you know have plans bid the thing out and and be able to start construction next uh next spring even if it's late spring um but i think uh, everyone in the community would like to see something started uh we shovels in the ground next uh, next year so is everybody in for may 26th who cannot make me to may 26th bill i can't make uh may 26th so they can go ahead without me what time 8 a.m okay. Good by me. Good by me. Okay, so let's um, let's do that right now. We're scheduled for the twelfth, um, and um, you know, to get the cost estimation, we'll uh, we'll put a special meeting out for May twenty sixth at eight a.m. and um, and go from there. Well, Chief from Council Booze, it's really very much appreciated. You're available if we have some questions going forward, I, I, uh, I presume. Um, Absolutely. And, uh, and we really appreciate the quick turnaround here. Uh, I know we, you know we called you halfway through and bumped you up a week. And so it's, uh, we really hats off and very much appreciate what, uh, what you accomplished for us. Thank you. Uh, so I guess that was, uh, we've just done that next steps um, from the agenda perspective. Any, uh, any new business before we adjourn? Okay, okay. Uh, motion to adjourn? Motion. Great. Thank you guys. Uh, thank, thank you guys. Thank you. Have a good, have a good thank day. You. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye.